everyone. Welcome to the pod. And uh, nothing better than some good June hype. Nothing better than coming courtesy of Urban Meyer, our favorite. Come back, Urban. Master of Come back to coaching. We need you. <laughs> Although he's throwing bombs out there. Really not a bomb. Uh, talking to Adam King, TV 10 in um, uh, Columbus. Urban Meyer said this of the Ohio State roster. As of now, the 2024 roster, this is one of the most talented rosters in the last decade, maybe ever. There we go. Uh, They've got to play, but you look at the quality of athlete at every position, I've never seen anything like it. (laughs) Now, This is a man who has won some national championships, put together a crew at the University of Florida that uh, could bring it, put together multiple big time teams at Ohio State. Those are just the teams he coached. He went against the Alabama juggernaut. He went against everybody, Clemson, all the different teams. Maybe ever, Urban Meyer says. Now, mm. Buckeyes mm, are mm, mm. undeniably loaded. They recruit at an extremely high level. Their transfers this year, uh, Caleb Downs, we'll talk about him in a sec. He's maybe play, it's not just an all American safety, maybe doing some running back, even though they've got 40 running backs, including Quinshawn Judkins. They bring in from Ole Miss. They've got Will Howard coming in from Kansas State. Uh, I don't think anybody is going to deny that Ohio State has a incredible uh, roster. Adding to it, Jim Tressel said this. Buckeye coaches loading up. I don't know if I've ever seen that many great players in that building all at once. Every position, every place you turn. This is Jim Tressel, also won national title at Ohio State. So Ryan's done a great job. Ohio State has done a great job. They're trying to purposely put pressure on on the current current football coach. I mean, man, that was my thought. Yeah, hey, thanks, boys. I appreciate it. Speak your mind. This is why we love Urban and when Coach Tressel putting it out there. I, he's not necessarily wrong, but this is some serious like buck nuts. Message board hyperbole here. (laughs) Best roster ever. (laughs) Ryan Day. I mean, yeah. yeah. (laughs) If you're uh, unaware, has not won a national title and has lost his last three games to the University of Michigan and is coming into a rather pivotal, important season. And this is the uh, his two predecessors, not counting the Luke Fickle year. We haven't heard from Coach Fickle, his interim coach one year. Yeah. Let's get, it might I, be he'll, he'll be like, too. probably, <laughs> probably. He'll be like, oh, my. John, John Cooper is still <laughs> alive. We yeah. can get him to say this <laughs> is the greatest Coop. team ever, too. Um, if you're Ryan Day, thoughts on that, Ross? What do you think? Yeah. yeah my, my, uh, I'm sure he has. I would like to, to hear his real thoughts on that. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm sure it's something like, well, gee, th- gee, thanks, you know, way to set me up uh, for uh, for this. It's, uh, as you mentioned, Dan, you know, hasn't won a national championship, has lost the last three against Michigan, and now enters this season uh, already filled with uh, certainly uh, plenty of uh, attention uh, given the, given those two facts, that he hasn't won a ring and he hasn't. He hasn't beat Michigan in the last three years, and now he's got this to deal with, which is his predecessor and the predecessor before him uh, anointing the team as the most talented in the in basically the history of uh, of football. So, uh, good luck, Coach Day. Yeah, uh, I mean it's it's throwing it out there on a guy that is undeniably going to feel the pressure to deliver this year. Um, you know, Urban, heck, Urban's the most talented team ever. Probably was 2015 when they not, did not win the Big Ten and did not go mm-hmm. to the playoff. The 2014 team won it all, and almost all of them came back. And then they lost in a sleet storm to Michigan State, and Michigan State went to the playoff and got smoked. And I mean, that was a, a major underachievement with that team. But 
Um, Ryan Day obviously has never gotten the brass ring, and I just I think the the hunger is off the scale basically there, given the losses to Michigan, given how institutionally all in they went on the transfer portal and on the coaching staff. You know, Dan men named off the big time transfers, but then you know you go get Chip Kelly, and uh, I mean this is all the chips are going into the middle of the table for Ohio State this year, and we will see how Ryan Day handles that and reacts to it, and the players handle it and react to it. And I still, they may have all the pieces. I still got to see Will Howard in action with all that talent around him and say, yeah, that guy's good enough. He might be. He very well might be. But but I still want to see that. But yeah, this um, I, I there is nobody with greater expectations and more pressure right now than Ryan Day in college football. Uh, by the way, there, th- this there's more pressure too than you know just these former coaches and what they said. The fact that they lost to Michigan. The fact that he hasn't won a national championship. There's a fourth thing here, which is they spent a lot of money. Their boosters <laughs> spent a lot of money. On this roster, upwards of thirteen to fifteen million dollars, maybe more, and and that's just coming from what Ryan Day has basically said publicly and in some talk privately about uh, the NIL at, at Ohio State. You know, uh, multiple maybe multiple players on uh, on seven figure deals is is what you kind of hear, and you know who's to know the accuracy of of some of the NIL figures. We've talked about that before, but. Plain and simple, they they spent a lot of money here, and and the the boosters and the fans are like never before. Um, probably expecting, really really feel like uh, they are investing their money to probably win championships at a level that we've never seen uh, in college athletics, and specifically there. So, and and this this continues into recruiting. Ohio State is absolutely dominating in recruiting. And Rivals had a story the other day from Adam Friedman about how they have a path. They have three. Now, this is just using the Rivals ratings. They're pretty stingy with their five stars is the one thing I like about Rivals. Year in, year out, there's about 30 to 35 guys to get five stars for Rivals. And I always like that because it equates to a, the number of first round draft picks there are in the NFL. So you can kind of, okay, these are first round picks. These are second round picks, right? Uh, at least that's how it works in my mind. Um, they already have three of those guys committed. They have a path to get eight, nine or more. And the most Yeesh. five stars ever signed by one school is eight. The record Georgia in 2018 and USC in 2004. Now, if you go back through those lists, the five stars <laughs> really weren't, they were not the guys that panned out. Uh, you think you go, oh yeah, Reggie Bush. And you know, no, no, it wasn't them. There were some great players, but a lot of the guys didn't, didn't pan out as big names. So, you know, whatever this is worth, but they are, they are rolling in every facet. I would say they're the number one program in the country going right now, except on field result. It kind of matters. Yeah. So I hope Georgia (laughs) fans didn't immediately like send a missile to my house when they heard the first part of the story, that sentence. (laughs) Um, They are killing it. They have got everything going. And they're, I mean, the selective transfers they brought in, we just bring Caleb Downs in. Like Alabama has a little bit of a wow. We got a coaching change. Bang! We'll take Caleb Downs. Thank you. Um, the you know and 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 what that allows, like you know, the way they can position their defense and all the different things. But so they they got everything going. But you got to win it now, uh, and that is a that is a a tough thing. B. Even though, even if you go back, I mean, I, I mean, the Miami Hurricanes and like, two, you know, ever, I mean, we're talking, I mean, yeah, <laughs> ever's a big you know, word. Uh, the Nebraska teams, I don't, I mean, ever, yeah. maybe ever, you could say, I don't know if I ever had, I, I mean, those, then you're sitting there saying, well, what about these teams you guys had? No, they're talking about anybody. A um, couple of those, Nick Saban, yeah. Nick Saban would call this rat poison. And, 
Uh, oh, sure it is would. probably rat poison, but mm-hmm. Ohio State has to now win. I guess you don't have to win the Big Ten, but they are now in a Big Ten that includes Oregon and Penn State and Michigan and maybe USC's. You know, it's it's a it's a tougher deal. That that Big Ten championship game is no longer going to be someone you're going to roll from the West, where you can put out your third string quarterback and win fifty nine to zero. Right. And then in the right. playoff, you're going to have to play p- presumably three. You're going to have to beat three teams. Three top eight teams, not two, not one, like in the Trestle era or the old era, but three. I don't like we, we don't really know how that will change the equation of what constitutes a quote unquote great team. Um, how do you manage that? How do you keep everyone focused till January 20th? A lot of these guys on Ohio State and all these top teams will be dealing with this. They're going to go pro. And how do you keep, you know, I just wonder about this. I was watching All American on the CW uh, the other night. (laughs) It's really my Bible on how college athletics works. (laughs) And it was hard to keep Jordan Baker and, and, uh, and uh, Spencer James focused as they were playing for the national title. Spoiler alert. Golden Angels University, while mm. also thinking about the draft. Mm. No, but I mean, it's like all of a sudden you get into January 15th, there are guys sitting there going, eh, you know, I, I mean, that's combines in a, you yeah. know, right? Like there's a lot. It's a whole different equation. True. So um, to sit there and say, hey, this is title or bust, but it feels like title or bust. I, I would think no one's really going to be that mad if they lose to Georgia in the national championship, but. um, Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, how that. can you just sit there and be like, oh, they got this. They're not that good. Not, I don't think they're that <laughs> much better than Georgia. I don't think you're going to sit there and be like, they, no, got I, this. I don't either. But but that, you've got Urban Meyer and other people saying it's the greatest team ever. And you know what? The the fans, it's not rat poison for the fans. It's LSD. It's it's amphetamines. They're going crazy like, oh, we got to win it. We got to win it. So I don't think they're putting up with any second place. Uh, in terms, I mean, I, I'm not saying you fire Ryan Day, but the, the fans won't be happy if they come in second. They will not. I I do not believe. But a couple of things there, key points. Not only did they get Caleb Downs, Caleb Downs is from Georgia, and Georgia wanted him badly when he went into the transfer portal, and they beat Georgia for Caleb Downs. That was a major statement, I thought, on the investment, perhaps literally on the investment uh, that Ohio state has made. So, you know, they are completely in, uh, I'd say Alabama 2020, that was a wagon. They went undefeated and, and they played an entire sec schedule. There were no Tennessee Chattanoogas or Citadels on that schedule. And they destroyed Ohio state in the championship game. That's another all time great one. But anyway, no, it's, it's just going to be fascinating to see how they handle that pressure. And, To your point, the season is longer. The season gets closer and closer to getting drafted. What do they get fatigue with being in college and and playing college games when they've got agents and people are saying, yeah, you know what? You're going to be a first round pick. And where, where does the emphasis change from? I'm a college guy to I'm an aspiring NFL player. Yeah. Back to the, the money, right? Uh, to piggyback off of Pat talking about how Ohio State is beating Georgia for some of these transfers. Georgia, Georgia's collective wrote this a few weeks ago, kind of went and spent time with them. They, they spend about $1.5 million a month, and most of that going to the football team. So you can imagine what the these amounts are um, and, and what Ohio State is doing resource-wise. So all that comes with with pressure. And, um, you know, it's not like, I think there's not, it's not like there's already, uh, not, a not enough. And you have the, the former coaches saying all this stuff. Here's, here's the, here's one, one wrinkle. I think Dan, you mentioned it is in an expanded playoff era, you allow, obviously allow more teams in and that, that pre- presents the, uh, opportunity or possibility, more possibility of getting upset. Um, right, even if you're stocked with stacked with a lot of talent, 
We see in the NCAA basketball tournament all the time. I know these are different sports and baseball too. We, we, we see it, it, you know, if you allow more teams in, the chances are you're going to have your, 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 the higher probability you're going to have upsets and, and that's going to be an interesting kind of world where we're so used to two or four, four teams, the best two or four teams making it and then, you know, beating each other up and they're really being not a ton of upsets there. You know, when you talk about just four teams or back in the day, just, just one game, just two teams. Um, but now you're, yeah, you're, now you're going to have potential, the potential for true upsets. And I don't mean just that group of five, 12 seed, right. But, but a, a three loss, um, you know, big 10, 10 seed, you know, a, a upsetting, upsetting a, a conference champion or something like that, or, or, uh, Big 12 team upset. I mean, just you're just going to have more upsets. Three, four SEC teams. I mean, and and who gets hot? If you go in the NFL, it's not we're the we're the most consistently yeah. dominant team all season. Is the teams like in college football? You have to be consistently dominant the whole year, and you have to basically go 12 and one. You, you had to or 13 and 0 to make the playoff. Sorry, Florida State. Um. <laughs> and if you didn't, the teams that managed that, like Michigan got, like Georgia was out last year, right? Now, yep. it's not Michigan's fault. They had to play Alabama. Alabama beat them. But it's one le- ne- next time, Georgia's still in this thing. You go back to the best NFL team I ever saw was the New England Patriots in uh, 08 when they went 16-0 and in the regular season, rolled to the Super Bowl, and they lose to a Giants team because the pass rush of the Giants was so good. And, you know, a helmet catch and this and that. But that Giants team was 7-7 seven and seven at one point in the season. But in the Super Bowl, they were incredible. So it's just you just have more bullets coming at you. You got to try to get away from. And uh, so I think that'll all be a challenge. He has talked about using Caleb Downs in spots. Obviously, he's got a lot of depth. He's looking to build depth at the position. I think that was probably uh, – you know, I would expect uh, Travion Henderson and Judkins to get the bulk of the carries, but he's looking for a fourth back. But this is where we're at at Ohio State's roster. I do think the big question <laughs> that I will have as we go in is Will Howard. How good is he? You know, is right. this right? You know, we know how good Quinn Ewers is. We know how good Carson Beck is. We know how good certain guys are. Will Howard is a was very good, and this is the guy. Ohio State targeted. This is the guy they wanted, and they certainly seem pretty confident with him, but can he play at that level and that level of game? Um, probably be the big the big question there. Yeah, quarterback's yeah. pretty important, Dan. I've heard that. Yeah. Right. We I mean, heck, look at the look at the stacked five star Alabama team last year. And, and not to say Jalen Milrow didn't make great, fantastic, sometimes incredible plays last year, but you know, in the game against Michigan, right? Some things came out that uh, you you wouldn't want to see from your quarterback. And uh, if uh, if Nick Saban probably had one one of his other quarterbacks from from past years, you know, that Alabama team probably rolls right through. Uh, so that can be the difference uh, and a big one. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, in the hierarchy of pressure at Ohio State. It's obviously Ryan Day at the top, but Will Howard's probably second. And we saw the pressure that was on Kyle McCord last year. It was pretty, it, at times, almost ugly. I think the uh, the weight that he played under, I, I mean, I stood outside the Ohio State locker room when they were leaving Michigan Stadium after they lost, and McCord had a couple of big interceptions, and he came out. He hadn't showered or anything, and he went over to his mom and put his head on her shoulder and sobbed. And it's like, man, that that that's the the pressure playing quarterback on an Ohio State team with a chance to win a national t- title. So we'll see uh, if Will Howard can deliver there. Yeah, no margin. I mean, he played pretty well. He got you know, that last interception. Yeah. He got hit, yeah. but mm-hmm. um, right. The one thing that, that the one weak link, I guess this is this is how big it's going right now at Ohio State. Much tumult. That Buckeye Assistant Athletic Director for for, for rec- football recruiting and events, Aaron Dunstan, 
has left the program and is going to a similar gig at Michigan. Yes. Mm. <laughs> this mm. I love. I'm worried God. about the events. How is the eventing going to get How run still as well How without Aaron survive? Dunstan? No, I, uh, yeah. comes with a tremendous reputation, is great at what she does. Um, so we're not trying to uh, do any of that. And this stuff's obviously very, very important. And Ohio State's recruiting at a, as I said, a an enormous level. Um, but uh, the tumult, the the speculation. Did Ryan Day have her escorted out of the building? Was there? I mean, we're down to staffers now in this war. This is. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, yeah. Bo Schembechler used to be Woody Hayes' assistant when he left. Maybe that was a you know. Eh, I mean, I guess that's for a head yeah. job. But what is going on? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dan, I wonder if uh, she uh, she has uh, memorized the uh, Ohio State signs. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, look out. Ooh, buddy. Or has access to the database. Well, that's of the database. Or whatever. Yeah. Uh, running back coach Tony mm-hmm. Alford also left for Michigan. Um, again, this is. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got all the they signs. They got all the signs now. now. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't need Connor Stallions anymore. Uh, change your signs. <laughs> Change your signs. Uh, actually, they yeah. got the head. They got the head communication, and it's like I just feel like that's just going to be Ryan Day playing video games on the sideline to Will Howard. The way these <laughs> college offenses go, I don't know if they're really calling plays as much as he's just saying you're throwing it to you know you're throwing it. Twelve's yeah. going to be open. Like this, I, I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm intrigued at this. This helmet communication thing could be worse than what we had, and. It was pretty <laughs> considering we had a massive scandal over sign stealing and like eight dudes yeah. in different colored shirts holding up SpongeBob pictures and things. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It could get worse. But yeah. when it's in reality, yeah, it's going to be Chip Kelly saying, hey, yeah, Buka, yeah, dig they, they'll, they'll call it right away. And I don't even know if there'll be plays like this. Just like this just could be seven on yeah. seven. This is this is we're getting Madden or whatever. Right. Yay. Sports. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be yep. in Columbus uh, Stadium, um, but uh, or Ohio Stadium. Uh, sorry. Um, anyway, big pressure on the Bucks and Ryan Day, and it's coming from the calls are coming from inside the house. The rat poison. <laughs> All right, we'll be back after this message. Season is coming fast upon us. Actually, not, but it's coming. It will get here. I was looking at the schedule. I thought we could play one of our favorite, you know, draft game kind of thing. Pick there you. we go. We got a couple more weeks of summer yeah, vamping here. Bear yeah, with us, so. please. Bear with us, please. Listen, we can't get Joe to go to McDonald's every show. It was helpful. <laughs> that was a popular segment. A lot of people alarmed <laughs> aghast at that. Uh, I believe one, one person asked that we – dig Dan's dead body out of the ball pit at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> People seem to enjoy the idea of me dying at uh, that. Yeah, they did yeah. in the ball pit. Yeah. yeah I, I had noticed those yeah. a lot. No one was yeah. like, Oh no, we don't want to see you dead. Eh. <laughs> yeah. I know where I rank. It's fine. I understand. Death, Death by, by ball pit. Just, yeah. I would, I don't know what I would do. I don't want to know. Anyway, last episode, uh, if you didn't listen, you should, uh, producer Joe had to, pay off his fantasy football bet by spending 24 hours in a mcdonald's he could eat his way uh, down in time he he managed to uh take 16 hours off mainly with the consumption of a just inappropriate amount of hash browns what, what was it Seven thousand total was calories was, yeah four mcchickens two big breakfasts right. 17 hash browns and also like uh, uh, just an entire grocery store worth of apple slices which are actually the best per some you see someone broke down yeah. someone else did a thing where they broke down the per minute per calorie ratio I mean this is big so listen to that anyway uh, without that going on uh, let's talk some games non conference only right at this point non conference only so some of the big ones Michigan Ohio State Texas Texas A and M Georgia. Texas, I don't know, whatever, Oregon, Ohio State, different ones that are coming in uh, that are going to be pretty exciting. What game are you most excited for, or do you think most inter, I don't know, whatever you want to define, 
Uh, Pat, we'll give you the first round draft pick because you usually need help. I, uh, um, I will say that, you know, I was going through the list, actually doing a little bit of preparation for this and it's, you know, it's just jarring and all these like, Oh, these matches, but then you were like, yeah, no, those are, those are conference games now, you know, that, uh, uh, Oregon playing Penn state and things like that. But, uh, the, the first choice to me is easy. This is a layup, um, Big House Week 2, Texas at Michigan. I know this is not going to be a Michigan team that's on the level of the last couple. Uh, at least I suspect it won't be. But it's still, it's Texas at Michigan. That's big time, meeting big time. A couple of incredibly large, proud fan bases. Great traditions. Uh, great fight songs. Great uniforms. Texas looks like a top five team. I think Michigan probably still top 15 team, maybe better. We'll see. Uh, and a big test for the Wolverines at home in life after Jim Harbaugh. So uh, that one to me is the the easy choice for the first round pick. Unbelievable game. Brand on brand. Also, I, I don't know how good Michigan will be. Obviously, their offense is replacing a, uh, a ton of talent. Namely, there's uncertainty at quarterback, which can mean anything. Could it could be fine. Alex Orgy could turn out to be a tremendous quarterback. We don't know, um, but we just don't know. But what we do know is they're going to have an, a, an incredible defense. And uh, at least, I think, three projected first-rounders on that defense. Um, Will Johnson in, in the secondary. And, out, you know, to be able to see Quinn Ewers and Sark's kind of pyrotechnic offense go against that Michigan defense uh, will be really interesting. And if, if Michigan can play defense against Texas, then they're going to be a contender, even if that offense takes a little while to get churned up. It's also a little bit of an example of what we are just talking about. Like, Michigan doesn't have to be dominant on week one. Like, if they get, yeah, you know, you get no, their I offense going by the end of the year and you get in the playoffs – you're a, di right, you're a different element. You don't have to sit there and be like, oh, we just beat everybody all season long. I will also say it will be nice to see Michigan not start off with three games so useless that they can have Jack Harbaugh, <laughs> you know, Shemmy Shembeck. No exhibition and, games this year, preseason. Yeah, and Fielding H. Yost come in to coach. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully the coaching staff will not be – will be intact and not suspended. Although who the heck knows? There's still active investigations going yeah, on. Yeah, There is still an yeah, active we'll investigation. If, uh, yeah. That, yeah. That was, uh, it was a boring one last year this year. Yeah. Much better. Uh, Ross, you got a pick Dan. You'll be shocked to know. I've done little to no Good job. research <laughs> on this topic, but <laughs> this is an easy one. Uh, for me, at least, is uh, I I'm taking with my pick LSU and USC and Las Vegas, mostly just to see the twenty to thirty thousand uh, South Louisianians in Vegas for a few days, uh, see if they even make it to the game Sunday night. But no, this is a uh, you know you got you got again. I think we talked about this game a little bit last week, but you got two coaches both kind of entering their third year after year one exceeded expectations, right? And year, year two kind of, uh, they settled back in and, and had a little bit of a, of a dip there. Um, so two, and, and obviously two huge kind of historic college football powers meeting in um, an unusual place uh, with two new starting quarterbacks, um, right? So brand new, brand new starting quarterbacks and, uh, so that 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 that's one I'm uh, I'm looking forward to. Hope to get out to that one. I, I have not covered a game in in uh, in the the stadium there. Um, what's it called? Uh, Allegiance. Uh, Allegiance. So, right. Allegiant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say Allstate, but that's uh -huh. another so story <laughs> in, in general. Uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't covered a game in Allegiant. Heard it's it's amazing. So I'm I'm just looking forward to that atmosphere uh, in general. It's like one of those modern spaceship type deals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, like so so I, just uh, well, I thought rain. it was open. I thought it was but, really cool until I went yeah. to SoFi, and then I was like, nothing is cool compared to SoFi. 
Well, SoFi during uh, the hurricane that blew through that, uh, during the yeah. championship game wasn't made for uh, SoFi wasn't made for uh, the strong thunderstorms there in uh, in LA. But yeah, it's it's uh, yeah it's uh, a pretty pretty awesome venue. All right. Well, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take the opener. We've discussed this some too, but uh, Clemson Georgia in Atlanta. Just wish it wasn't at noon. Uh, as Ross said, like the, I don't know that there's a whole lot of like pressure on Texas, Michigan. Like both teams, both coaches could lose, the teams could lose. I think you'd be like, okay, it's it's just a good early season clash. And I hope we get more of those that teams are a little less fearful of like a loss going forward. So we can all hope there are better games. This one does have tumult. Certainly for Coach William Christopher Sweeney, and where is his program now that once was above Georgia and then certainly stood eye to eye? He he took them from below to above, and now where are we? Uh, Georgia is a double digit favorite in this game. Georgia's the team that probably goes off one or or two, uh, unless Urban Meyer gets a vote, which he might. Um. And so it's is Georgia cranking up the wagon in pursuit of this national title, and is Clemson just uh, a, a speed bump, or do the Tigers have more in them than this? They did lose a lot of games last year. They also lot, lost a lot of really close games. So I think there's a, an enormous spotlight uh, on Clemson. This is also uh, just two great programs, two great fan bases. Uh, I don't love neutral site games. I wish these were on campus, but uh, certainly, it'll be a it'll be a scene down in Atlanta with a with a fifty fifty split uh, of uh, of those two fan bases and all that. The, the whole bit is going on, so I'm going Clemson, Georgia as my uh, as my first round pick. Yeah, that'll be awesome, and that is you know Atlanta is such a hotbed for both schools to recruit, and a lot of Clemson alums that live in Atlanta or in that area. So that uh, that city will be on fire not, hopefully not literally but uh when that for that game all right pe- yeah so, back, back to you to we me. won't snake get- draft it we'll uh, let you go first this is like uh, you're i'm getting all my picks everything i want here so i i win this draft i'm saying that because to me that the would have been my second the second choice overall alabama at wisconsin i mean that's gonna be fantastic you get alabama to come to camp randall uh you know, the Crimson Tide, I, I appreciate some of the scheduling that Nick Saban did as far as, like, we'll play wherever against whoever, and this is one of those games. And for Wisconsin fans, this is going to be as big a home game. I mean, it's going to be huge to, to have the Crimson Tide come in there. And you want to talk about a party the night before that game. That, I believe, is the third week of the season, so September 14th, I think. Uh, State Street. On the Friday night before that one, look out. That one will be a lot of fun. And big early test for Kalen DeBoer. He's trying to replace only the greatest coach of all time. You got to go on the road to play a Wisconsin team that should be much better than they were last year. Luke Fickle, if you look at his track record at Cincinnati, first year, eh, second year, very good. And stayed very good after that. So I expect uh, Wisconsin to be much improved this year. It's going to be a scene. I mean, in terms of like most fun games to go to this year as a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Still Alabama at Tennessee kind of stands out to me as like that's that's gonna be awful fun. But this that's obviously not an on con game. Uh yeah. Hard to beat that one. Yeah. And also and for the Big Ten fans, oh the SEC teams never leave the South. Well, Alabama's going I, to Madison, Wisconsin. Well, it reminds me of the speaking of that, right? It reminds me of when Georgia went to Notre Dame. Um, yeah, you know, it, it just uh, uh, that should it, it is a rarity, and uh, I think maybe Auburn went to Penn State. Yes, right recently. Yes. So they're starting to branch out. Yes, LSU went to Wisconsin once, right? They played in Green Bay. Yeah, they played in Lambeau Field. That's right. Yeah, yeah, 60, yeah. 2016. Yeah, but it is a rarity, and and that is an exciting one. Um, uh, I, I would I would guess uh, Alabama is going to bring twenty twenty five thousand people, kind of like Georgia did to Notre Dame, almost uh, uh, buy out uh, half the dang stadium. So that that should be uh, 
that should be exciting. I've One got, thing, uh, Alabama, and I think Greg Byrne yeah. is doing this, is really like they're trying to capitalize on being like a national program and a national school, right? Mm-hmm. And they're yeah. really making a focus yeah. on these home and homes all over the country, sort of the way um, Notre Dame once did. I mean, I'm looking at these home and homes, Wisconsin home and home, Florida State home and home, West Virginia home and home, Ohio State home and home. I guess I can stop saying home and home. Uh, Notre Dame, (laughs) Oklahoma State, Georgia Tech, and Boston College, Arizona, Minnesota, and Virginia Tech. These are all ho- now it runs through 2035. Uh, make sure you tune in to Race for the Case uh, it's on <laughs> September 2nd, the day after that Virginia Tech game in 2035. We'll be discussing it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, they're go they're they're doing it, and uh, good on you because not, you know that's that's exciting and that's what that's what the sport needs. Um, I mean, that's, that's a lot of, they're all over the place. I mean, a lot of those are not necessarily, I mean, Ohio State's Ohio State. They should win a lot of these games, but still, they're taking the show on the road. Yeah, and I, you know what, I think that's a good point, too, that it, it is national reach um, for, for the athletic program, for the football program, but for the school, and Alabama has been very ambitious about expanding students. its, its out-of-state to yeah, uh, More, more out-of-state students yeah, than in-state. They, and Bama rush, yeah. they got so, that Bama rush thing. That is, <laughs> that's bringing them from all over. So, go go, roll tide. Uh, Ross's turn. Whose turn is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Three three yeah. three guys, yeah. and I already lose it. Like the three, uh, I'm a three card mm-hmm. Monty. I was already confused. Hard, yeah, <laughs> been drinking early this morning on the Wednesday. Miss uh, June June nineteenth. I uh, I'm gonna go with another. Season opener that that first full Saturday is uh, Notre Dame at A and M. I think that's the nightcap, maybe at that uh, on that day uh, on ABC. Riley uh, Riley Leonard, former Duke quarterback, right, going to be manning the uh, manning the ship for for the Irish going into a game against his former coach now at Texas A and M, Mike Elko. Uh, some an exciting storyline there, and just just want to see. I don't I don't. I don't know that a lot of people expect a ton from Texas A&M this year um, on year one, but they're at home. It's a certainly a hard place to play. Um, and there, but there's a lot of expectation obviously around Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame. Um, this, this feels like more the year, you know, right. Expanded playoff. It kind of sets up for them to grab that, grab that five seed or one of that, uh, one of those other at large uh, positions in the playoff. So, that's an exciting one. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a little what we're talking about. Two big brands, all that. Great fan base. Hot game. Big expectations for Notre Dame. Absolutely terrific uh, football game. I'm going to go, uh, I don't think this is going to have national title implications or anything, but I'm, I'm intrigued, and this was one of the big games last year. Colorado at Nebraska. And I know, I know, Coach Prime, they get more hype than maybe they deserve. Um, I mean, I think, did both these teams have losing seasons last year? And I'm picking them as the sixth best game. Um, But I don't care. It's going to be very, very interesting. First off, Colorado has a bunch of first-round picks and potentially could be really good. Uh, You know, what is this program? Is it just this conglomeration of talent? They lost a bunch of staffers, not just players. Can Colorado, like... How serious is Colorado? Uh, I don't know that, uh, you know, Shador Sanders is a first-round NFL quarterback, and you're not always going to have those. So this is an opportunity for the Buffs and for for Prime to, to capitalize, and they probably need to be able to go in and beat a Nebraska team. That said, Matt Rule is phenomenal at building programs, uh, and these are two totally different ways you build a program. And Nebraska's a you know fantastic place to see a game. Uh, this is a renewal of uh, of an old rivalry that was once in very very intense back in the day. Uh, I just think there's going to be incredible hype and hoopla on this thing, and I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, you could walk away with a pretty big statement one way or the other, particularly about Colorado. 
yeah, there will be major pronouncements made by people hmm. like us in the media on the winners and losers of that game for sure. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, this is like out. a program game. Like this is a. So yeah. that's uh, that's it. All right, you want to do one more round? Might as well. Yes, okay, I'm loaded. Going. I'm going rogue here, actually. I did I'm breaking a lot more the rules. Than I did. <laughs> I'm actually going to break the rules and pick two games under one storyline umbrella on the same day. Uh, okay. September 14th. And these are non conference games now Oregon at Oregon State, Washington at Washington State. Hmm. I am glad they're still playing the former Civil War and the Apple Cup. Uh, I am not glad that they're no longer in the same conference, but I'm glad they're playing. I'm glad that the, the jilted two get the home games. Corvallis and Pullman get the turncoats that left them behind to come into their stadiums, and I think those are going to be really intense, fierce atmospheres uh, for the, the Pac-2 teams uh, to try to, to stick it on uh, Big Brother that left them. Yeah, that's exciting. It is. It is kind of. It's kind of stinks that it's not the last game of the year and not a conference game. Yeah. But uh, yeah. still, there was there was a time where uh, you know there was a thought that neither one of those games would continue, and uh, uh, just like Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, um, you know, for a while, A and M and Texas, obviously, it's it's just not ideal to to lose those those rivalry games. So it's it's great to see see uh them continuing all right dan my, i'm up i'm up now I, I got a weird i got a weird one here uh this is week two arkansas at oklahoma state so you've got uh sam Pittman and bobby petrino pat's favorite uh favorite guy um traveling to um to meet uh to meet mike gundy and, and the cowboys and this is a uh this is kind of a revival Right of an, an old old rivalry that stopped back, I think, in the eighties. Um, but they played, you know, for a while, uh, almost every year, I think. So it's a revival of a an old series um, in, in one that uh, should be should be really interesting. Especially this, you know, we talk about coaches under pressure. Obviously, Sam Pittman, um, you know, it got a, got another year uh, and uh, hired hired uh, Bobby Petrino as offensive coordinator. We're going to see very quickly how that works out. Uh, I like that one. Sneaky. Sneaky. Yeah, some of the best ones aren't just like the best teams. Like, you know, um, we've discussed, uh, I'll end this with a couple honorable mentions. We discussed Miami at Florida being this massive game, and I think that I, I would probably pick that, but we have have discussed the pressure on both uh, deals, particularly Gators coach Billy Napier, but uh, Mario Cristobal too. He's recruited well enough that Miami probably should win this game, but you got to win it. Uh, somebody's going to be miserable. The message boards will melt down at the end of that game. Uh, sneaky good matchup early season is Tennessee and NC State. Both teams come won nine games last year, come into this year with a lot of expectations. And they're playing in Charlotte. I think that's going to be a really, really interesting game. Um, the one I'm going to go with, though, is Boise State at Oregon. Also early in the year. It's real first chance to see Dylan Gabriel and the Ducks, what they can do, how good is this team. Top five, I would expect they will be. Uh, Boise State may be the best team in, in the group of five and could be a potential playoff team. If they can somehow win this, it would be enormous for that because, yeah, you got to win your league, but you have to kind of separate yourself from the other group of five teams to earn a playoff spot. Their quarterback, Broncos quarterback, is likely Malachi Nelson, who spent last year, you know, five-star, highly, highly recruited high school player, spent one year at USC before leaving, uh, and they got a first-year coach up there at Boise uh, that's uh, they've had some great clashes in the past, Oregon and and Boise State. So, I guess you could take any of those three. Uh, I think will be pretty interesting with the, with that Miami Florida game being the the ultimate uh, the ultimate decider. Any thoughts on any of those three, Pat? Yeah, no, I like them all. I, I had Tennessee, NC State definitely on my list. Um, uh, 
Miami and Florida, yes, that is the fear and loathing game because you lose it and it's going to be intolerable. Not only you, you, from a fan base, you got to listen to another fan base you hate, but you hate your own team then after if you lose that because you were supposed to be getting better by now in the third year under your new coach. And then Boise, I, yeah, I, I, I don't think Boise wins that game, but you're right. If they do, that would seemingly give them a huge leg up in the group of five sweepstakes. And uh, they got also a great running back, Ashton Genty. Um, who's a freshman last year, ran for 1,300 yards, and I think he was being wooed, even though there's no tampering in college football, but he was being wooed by other schools with collective money, and he stayed uh, at Boise. Yeah, the Miami, uh, Miami-Florida Miami game, I, I, uh, that's one of the games that I'd, I'd like to wear uh, um, tank top, jean shorts, and <laughs> flip-flops, and uh, have a flask in my back pocket and sit in the – Student section and uh, take it Old all school. in, Dan. You'd stand out <laughs> with all of that. <laughs> I would pass on the jean shorts. I don't shorts want to see personally. you in jean shorts. <laughs> you do not, you're not a student, Ross. <laughs> you know, backwards hat on. No. Uh, I don't why, know. why the student can, section? I'll try to pull it off. Because that's where the action happens, <laughs> man. That's where it's fun. Yeah. Uh, the, you, you 114 degrees. <laughs> Um, yeah. I would definitely rather. I would rather attend any of these games as a fan than cover them. Absolutely. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, legal department this week. Uh, Les Miles okay. is suing LSU. Uh, not uncommon. We have coaches suing schools, but this one's not even about money. Hey, uh, I think he already got paid. Uh, Les is suing LSU, saying that. The vacating of wins, I guess they they offered to vacate wins in response to an NCAA infractions case that uh, the school under Les Miles was found guilty of. He he found that to be uh, unfair. He they LSU vacated thirty seven victories of Le, of Les Miles uh, due to recruiting violations. This is from ESPN stemming from impermissible benefits paid to the father of uh, a former player by a former booster. Uh, Les is saying, hey, he didn't do it. Why did he have to lose his victories? Now, because he lost those 37 wins, he has a winning percentage. Wait, dropped his winning percentage to point from 0.665 to 0.597. Now, uh, who cares? Well, the, the College Football Hall of Fame cares. You must have a coach must have won at least 60% of his games, 0. .600, in at least 100 games to qualify for selection in the College Football Hall of Fame. It is a hard and fast rule. And because of that, Les Miles can is not eligible, because of this vacating of wins, is not eligible to uh, be in the, uh, in the College Football Hall of Fame. Now, as was pointed out, uh, he went. He only won three games. Like he went like three and eighteen or something at at Kansas. Yeah, and yeah, three, three and nine. 19, if he had just gone didn't four and eighteen, record, yeah, he would have gotten yeah. over. So maybe he shouldn't have done the money grab at Kansas and been so bad. Yeah, I don't know. Which uh, which I guess we could people's court this. I guess what what do we think, Pat mm. Justice Forty? What mm. do you got? Yeah, I got an easy solution for less. You know get the job at like nickel state or somewhere for a year and win yourself a couple <laughs> of games and, and then retire. You can actually, if you start two and oh, retire, <laughs> what? So that would be my suggestion. <laughs> go get, go get some, <laughs> some low level job, win two games. Say thanks. I'm done here. Justice Good 40 has been drinking too early on a Wednesday. <laughs> I think certainly in this one strategy. <laughs> Why not quit on the team? <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's less miles. Uh, Did he quit on Kansas? Basically, he went there and he, he coached while in semi retirement. Uh, I don't think Les is in any condition to to retake the field as a as a coach, as we saw that toward the end of the the can, Kansas tenure. This is um, yeah, I, this is a tricky one uh, because. 
the vacated wins stem from, you know, improper benefits, um, NCAA investigation that produced improper benefits for recruits, father specifically in a job in Baton Rouge. Um, and Les was the, the coach then. I think it was 13, 2013, 2012, uh, the recruiting class. Um, in that, that player, um, I believe it was Vidal Alexander, offensive lineman, played in, you know, X amount of games and, um, those games were were vacated. It, this is something that's been done through through history. So I don't think that's changing. It doesn't seem like LSU is going to change that and unvacate uh, those victories. I, I do. Um, I am interested in the National Football Foundation, who, which manages the Hall of Fame and decides their board decides uh, who's on the Hall of Fame and, and who's or who, who's nominated for the Hall of Fame and who's not, and it goes through this rigorous process, if they will relax on the 60% winning winning percentage, um, not just for Les Miles, uh, but for Mike Leach as well. You know, um, we, we I know we talked about that a year and a half ago or so. I remember right after Mike died, I had a story about that specifically because Archie Manning, had, who, was the, who was the chair of the NFF, uh, called and and uh and told me that uh, he believes that the you know that mike should be in the hall of fame and there should be a way to make that happen uh mike's winning percentage is whatever somewhere 15 9. Point five, nine I six he's basically mm -hmm. a game away yeah and yeah. uh yeah so yeah think about mike leach not being in the hall of fame somebody who who's coaching tree is huge and whose influence on offensive football is just about as big as, as anybody in the history of the game. Yeah. There's a plenty of people in and around football who are kind of lobbying for Leach on his behalf. Not, not as many that I've heard from about less, but uh, the Leach thing has definitely been a, a sticking point with a lot I mean, of Leach. He never won the national title. Like, like Les miles, obviously. Um, he also never got to coach at LSU. Uh, he Correct. had three losing seasons, uh, four losing seasons his entire career. First year at Washington State, first year at Mississippi State, like three and nine, four and seven. So that really dragged him down. He had another three and nine at Washington State. Uh, he had a six and seven. I mean, Washington State was so down when he got there. Then he got it built up, obviously built up. To, I mean, it's really hard to say Mike Leach shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Les Miles, I don't know. I I I, this, I feel like Hall of Fames take a little, take themselves a little too seriously. But I do understand you don't want to just get overloaded by every single coach that did anything. Um, but Mike Leach certainly is a is a specific uh, candidacy that I, I do like. So I don't know. Yeah. Le Mike Leach and, and Howard yeah. Schnellenberger are the two guys that I think helped change the game, and that should be probably under greater consideration than winning. Yeah, I, I did a story and like, I, I don't know if without Mike Leach, you, you have um, Patrick Mahomes at this, uh, at this point, right? Like, I mean, I, I don't know if he coaches quite that way. Um, all right, we'll do what uh, Ross had to go and work. Uh, we did not, but we can do a quick uh, story here. Uh, I think we mentioned this before, ongoing saga. A second grade teacher who was arrested in California last year for being drunk in class. Uh, Wendy Munson's blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit when she was nabbed midway through teaching students at Nuestro Elementary School north of Sacramento last October. Uh, she is not facing criminal charges because the Sutter County District Attorney's Office uh, revealed that and concluded, quote, it's not illegal to teach drunk, end quote. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's the quote. My, it's pretty bad. It should be bad for your career, but maybe not <laughs> quote, illegal. It's not illegal to teach drunk, end quote. Jennifer Dupree, the district attorney, told NBC 15, um, while the district attorney's office agrees that it is highly inappropriate to teach while intoxicated, it is unfortunately not illegal. Uh, so the teacher was cuffed and hauled away when their <laughs> deputies got her at 830 in the morning after a co-worker raised Ooh. suspicions. Ooh. She failed a sobriety test 
blood alcohol was still twice the legal limit some two hours after her arrest. So point oh boy. one six. Um they showed her driving to school on uh on video. Um there's possibility she drank after she arrived at school, though. They don't know. Um, apparently, this woman found a great loophole as she did something so unbelievable that the that in the in- entire, I don't know, 152 how old is California, that no legislator ever thought <laughs> to pass a law. <laughs> it's sort of this is kind of like Connor Stallion's defense, right? Like this, this isn't written, right? Yeah, say right. I can't send yeah. my college roommate yeah. to the game doesn't say that where does it say that i uh yeah pat thoughts did wendy munson pull one yeah. over on the old school board wendy munson found yeah heck of a loophole show me show me somewhere in the legal statutes where i can't teach <laughs> drunk mm. uh like i said yes probably not not a great career move i would imagine she will not be a teacher anymore so. ever but at least she's she's out of the slammer, so good for her. She gets to uh, avoid doing hard time, and hopefully she uh, she can dry out and find another yeah, occupation. I think her other defense would have been, you hang out with a bunch of second graders all day. <laughs> <laughs> Things are tough at West yeah, Row it's Elementary tough School, time man. Out there. Uh, these kids are just totally driving me crazy. Yeah, um, well, we have a lot of teachers, I know, listen – and uh, we appreciate you guys, but uh, yeah, we can't we can't side with uh, your brethren there. That one's uh, <laughs> so she's <laughs> escaped <laughs> escaped prosecution. One of the great quotes uh, of all time from a district attorney. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's our show. We'll be back uh, next week with uh, more college uh, football, uh, maybe a little more from the College World Series and the uh, Jello Shot Challenge and all that. Who knows what. So continue to subscribe, leave us nice reviews, and we will talk to you later.